Hey, Get Inspired, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Life Inspired. This is the show where we talk all about how and why people are following God, the crazy stories that he's doing in people's lives, the way he's turning them from just an average blah life to um, some great dot, 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 and then God moment in their life, and he's turned them to a new inspired path. Um, that they're walking. And you can watch this show and share this show from um, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, or lifeinspiredshow.com. And we do ask that you would subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page because that helps more people get exposed to the program and exposed to hearing about what God can do in their lives. So we really appreciate you watching and liking and subscribing. Our guest today is my very dear friend, Amy Stair of Real Estate Masters Guild, Amy has been my real estate coach for many years. I don't even know how many years now, like five maybe, right? Yeah. It's been a long time. So wel welcome, Amy. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for inviting me to do this. I just feel honored and blessed. Absolutely. I, I don't know why I haven't asked you sooner. We've been doing Life Inspired Show for three years. So I don't, I I don't know why I haven't asked you before. And last year, you got to take that amazing trip to Africa. So, you know, I don't know if that's going to be part of your story today. But if not, maybe we'll ask a little bit at the tail end because um, that's just quite stuff that God was doing in your world back then about a year ago. So so give us a, a little backstory. Your first question, Amy, is what's the backstory to a particular turning point that you're going to share with us later? What's, you know, set up? What was just life was going along look like? What was that? <laughs> you know, it's. It's funny because this this is rooted in Africa. So I'm glad that you brought this up. Cool. Um, just a short, quick backstory. I've been dreaming about Africa since I was six years old. My grandparents lived near St. Louis. And so when we went on vacation, they'd take us to the zoo. And I was always just mesmerized by the lions. Oh, yeah. And so when I hit high school, these are all God things. I, I know that in hindsight, when I hit high school, my French teacher had been to Kenya on mission trips. And so she wow. talked about it all the time. So here I am a kid in French class hearing about Africa. And I, I know now that that was just God rooting it in my soul. I needed to get there. And so wow. fast forward 25 years and a friend of mine, her aunt runs a company called Destined to Travel. And they do a make a different safari where they go and visit these kids in a children's home and then they go on safari. And I thought, wow, that would be really cool to do, but I don't feel like I can justify that kind of expense in my life right now. And then my best friend wandered into the gym one day and said, I've decided I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro before I turn 55. Will you go with me? And I said, yes. And then I backpedaled and said, hang on a second. <laughs> Um, when are you turning 55? That's in Africa, right? How tall is that mountain? And so then I really, I started praying about it and um, light bulb moment. No, I think it was a God moment. Could I do it all at the same time? Could I go climb the mountain, then go see the, the kids, then um, stay and see the animals, see my lions? And so that's what I started planning for. Um, and that would bring me fast forward to September of last year when I went and the real cool God stuff that happened on the mountain. So that's that's the behind the scenes okay. of what, why in the heck did I even go over so, there? <laughs> yeah, there you go. So what's, so what's the dot, 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 and then God, what did God do? Maybe it was on the mountain. I don't, so what's the, what's the dot, dot, dot moment? So the dot, dot, dot is um, my best friend, Donna. Um, she is um, just a spiritual warrior, a prayer warrior. And she went on that trip with a long list of people to pray for um, because she went around asking, how can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? What do you want me to take with me? Wow. And so she had this long list of people she was praying for. I just went with an open heart, not knowing what was going to happen. And there are a lot of points um, on this. It's not a technical climb, but it's a climb of endurance and toleration <laughs> and patience. And there was a moment when I started feeling short of breath, which is in, you're at 17,000 feet. Of course, you're short of breath. <laughs> and 
I said, God, I know that you are the air that we breathe and I'm scared right now. If, if you could just help me fill my lungs, let me breathe all the way to the base of my lungs and literally on my next inhale, everything just opened up. And I thought, oh my gosh, why have I not been talking this plainly to God before today? You know, I talked to him in the car and all that kind of stuff, but it was a very specific request with a very immediate response. And then as we got closer to the summit, there's this um, dynamic where you're hot from the exertion, but it's really cold, really cold. It got to two degrees one night when we were sleeping. And so your, your instinct is to want to take your jacket off. <laughs> and, um, but you don't want to do that because it's really cold. And so I said, God, I'm just, I'm so hot right now. If you could just bring me a gentle little breeze. I, I think that's all I need and I can keep going and I won't take my coat off. And instantaneously, a gentle breeze came in. There was no air movement and it came in and stayed with me for 10 minutes. So those were like hints wow. at, hello, Amy, you're in a very dangerous situation, but God is always with you. Maybe you should start talking more. So then we were coming up that we summited 19,341. Hooray. Praise God. We're all good. My best friend gets altitude sickness. She's the most fit of all of us. And she has to rush down the mountain with one of our guides. So now my security blanket is gone. <laughs> and then um, I was in six. I know I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. Um, I was in six inches of like ash and scree and I started falling down and everybody else got ahead. So it was just me, the head guide, and one of our two people carrying medical equipment is required to stay with us. And I started feeling just this sense of complete hopelessness and abandonment. And God said, you are never alone. And just in that moment, we couldn't see anybody else anymore. They were so far ahead of us. Um, we came around a curve and I sent you a picture of this so you'll have it. God presented me with the most amazing sunset I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow. And it was, he was saying very clearly, very specifically, you are never alone. And here is your reward right here, right now with these two men staying beside you. You are safe. You are loved. Everything's going to be okay. So that was my moment where I feel like I really woke up to God. And that's a phrase I've used many times since. Um, I started talking to him more. I started being more specific about what I was praying for. And he put on my heart while I was in Africa, um, these men were just so selfless and so kind and so anticipating of our needs. I really feel like they were demonstrating what it means to be like Jesus. There was nothing they wouldn't do for us. And so I started asking them what they need. And the theme throughout was we need to get our children educated um, in, in private school where they'll learn English. And so they can change a dynamic of their life. So they're not sentenced to, to do the things that we have all done and do. And so I started thinking about it and I thought if I can just help one kid. And then when my husband came and met us after the climb and went to the children's home, went, went on safari, the second he walked up to me, I started blabbing it to him about this idea I had to help one kid. And, and God said, oh, no, my child, <laughs> there are way more children who need your help. And so very long story short, started a foundation. We got 501c3 status. We have sponsored 18 children wow. already this year. And, um, and now we're, he's, he's saying, don't stop with sponsoring, build a school, build two schools. <laughs> And so there, there are lots of things that work now, but I attribute it all to that one moment when I woke up to God and, and truly witnessed and heard and believed at a level I have never believed before. And I'm sorry, I'm getting <laughs> teary. Um, it's okay. It's awesome. 
And the number of times he's let me speak that story since I got back is absolutely <laughs> incredible. I've, I've gotten right. to present to Rotary. I've gotten to present to Optimist Club. Um, I've gotten to do it in my own platform at Real Estate Masters Guild. And um, it just, uh, it's mind blowing to me the things that can be accomplished when you open yourself up to God's possibilities right. and you, you let go of the fear and let go of the limits and just let God guide you. It's, it's, <laughs> you talk now. <laughs> I, I love the, I love the let go of the fear and let go of the limits. I mean, like something that we pray for, um, at inspired homes, we pray for limits, life and love that we would choose to limit ourselves from the things that are extravagances that we don't need. Right. You know, that people would choose limits and, you know, um, eat healthy or stay away from things like drugs or, you know, other things like that, that are dangerous for us, that we would choose limits. But, but Right. We, there's so many times when we limit ourselves in ways that he doesn't want to limit us. He wants to open up and, and make things limit less. I mean, as Americans, I feel like we live so extravagantly and so, you know, free for all and everything goes. But his, if we choose certain limits, like if we choose to, you know, limit how much time we spend on social media or TV or something like that and spend more time with him, he like has so much for us. He's limitless. He's eternal. He's yes. everything. And, and he has so much for, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil to prosper you and not to harm you. And, and so many times we don't want to um, choose that. I, I record several of these um, at TJ 21 every week. We don't like, we don't, I'm not, I didn't just do you today. I record, and, and another one that I just recorded was talking about the same thing. When we will choose to follow him, even if what he's asking us to do is something we want to say no to, I don't really want to do that because we're scared. And you just said, let go of the fear and let go of the limits and know that he's got you. Um, that's so impactful and makes so much difference in life. There's a book called The Prayer of Jabez that I read years ago, yes. and they yes. have the story of going up the slide at the park, um, and when you, you know, let mom sit over there watching you, and you go down the little kid slide, that's really cool, and then you go to the medium slide, and that's a little scarier, but okay, but then, and he tells this story about climbing up the ladder to the great big slide, and he froze on the ladder, he couldn't go the rest of the way up, and he couldn't climb back down because he was scared, and all the big kids are like yelling at him, going, move out of the way, come down or go up, but you're in the way, we want to climb, and so, you know, our, his mom came and went down the slide with him, and our father wants to just come and go down the slide with us, we don't have to be afraid, so that's what I thought of when you shared your story. <laughs> Well, it's two things there. Um, first, that's my verse. So <laughs> thank you for sharing it. Jeremiah 29, Yay. 11 is my verse. Um, I, I shared that piece about my best friend with you because um, when she started to struggle, we got to the summit and she cried out to God and said, God, why didn't you help me? And he said, my child, you didn't ask. She'd been asking for all these other people for five days of us being on the mountain. And never once did she say, God, please help me. Wow. She just thought because Aww. she did the right thing for other people, it was just, he would, he would help her. And anyone who knows Donna would tell you she is a super independent spirit. I know God gets that. <laughs> and so he's like, okay, you tell me when you he need me. that I'm way, not, right? I'm not going to interfere. You don't want my help. I'm not going to help. So it, it was just, we shared these stories much later and it was just incredible to think at a moment that I was asking so readily and trusting that she was just hunkering down and being defiant. And so it's been- Doing um, it herself, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to do anything alone. Very so cool. um, one of the gals, Another cool thing that happened that I'll just share, because this is the kind of stuff that starts happening when you open yourself up. We prayed every meal and none of us planned that. It just worked out that way. It turned out that we were all Christians. Um, most of the people in Tanzania are either Christian or Muslim. And it, it just so happens that our lead guide and our waiter were both Christians. And so 
we, we were seven days on the mountain. We each took a day. We just dis decided it spontaneously. And there were six of us, but one person had to go back down the mountain. So on the sixth day, we looked at Respicious, our head guide, and, and we said, would you, would you take today? Would you pray for us? And he prayed over all our meals in Swahili that day. And then Pascal, seeing what had happened on day six, took day seven, and he prayed over us on day seven. So that was really magical. And you just um, by not being afraid, by letting go of the fear and just showing up as who you are in Christ, it's amazing how other people will come along and participate and feel safe in your presence. So right. I just want to encourage everybody watching that to be authentic right. and don't be afraid of yes. people's reactions. Right. Yep. They want you to be real because they want to be real and they don't feel like they can be when you're not. Mm -hmm. They they feel like, oh, I have to be somebody else because, yeah. So I typically also ask, so what is inspired look like? So you've had this turning point and you've had this wake up. What's it look like today? How do you stay inspired today? <laughs> um, I need to only look at the pictures of the kiddos and that just completely fires me up. Um, I have a board now, and so we meet once a month. Um, one of our board members is a former pastor, and he prays over all of our meetings. And my big thing, especially with what's going on in the world right now, Diane, is show up as light. And that it's inspiring to see other people come around when they're in a darker, sad space and they see other people finding the lightness that they're attracted to the light. We're told this, right? We're told this in scripture. So right. um, just being a light for people at a time when, when it feels very, very dark to a lot of people and refocusing on the good. You know, when, when we right. as a board get frustrated about something going on in our regular lives, we all just go 18 kids. And then, you know, the power of God shows right back up and instantaneously, like it did with the air and, and all that kind of good stuff. So um, I also started this habit of um, being still in the morning and listening to what is the word of the day that's showing up, what's God placing on my heart. And then I go Google, what does the Bible have to say about that word? And I always get a verse Ooh, that's cool. meaningful and I carry it with me all day. I only do it on weekdays. Um, but it's, it's really interesting how he's always given you just the right word at just the right time. You know, how many of us have ever gone to service and then come out of there and said, I think that was just for me. <laughs> that's right, right. That's how it works. And when you start really paying attention to it, it's amazing the magic um, that it puts in your life. Absolutely. Right. Very cool. Thank you, my friend, for sharing. Thank you for being here today. I'm honored. I'm so honored. Thank you for blessing me with this. It's such a pleasure. remarkable such a what pleasure. you're doing. Um, I know I, if you guys would like to visit more with Amy, I know she would visit with you. If you're from the Michiana area, you're going to have to do it virtually because she lives out West. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, thanks for sharing it with somebody that you think needs to hear her story. If you've had a dream um, since you were six years old of something that you thought you were supposed to do look at me getting choked up don't don't deny that dream put away the fear put away the limits and know that your limitless god loves you and he wants to get you there and um, you're going to do it so thanks honey i appreciate it Amy. thank you I love all you right guys. thank yeah thank you guys for watching share with somebody that you think needs to sh hear it on youtube facebook or lifeinspiredshow.com and messages if you want to talk to amy you guys have a great week Bye bye